Well, this past week, and officially today, um, a very unusual, controversial start to the college football season has begun. And what I mean by that is, uh, basically, you're going to have a college football season as of right now without two major factors, that being the Pac-12 and the Big Ten, who are part of the Power Five conferences uh, when it comes to uh, teams being eligible to um, compete for the national championship, if not get into the New Year's Day Six. And the reason I say this is mainly due to the fact that now, when you think about it, the Power Five becomes a Power Three and they got to look for some alternatives to fill the void. Um, I read an article this morning from ESPN as well as watched a video clip that went along with it where there was discussions of various possibilities of how this college football season could go and how the Pac-12 and the Big Ten could be involved in some you know, shape or form. But as I was also reading the article, they were talking about the AAC, the American Athletic Conference that's, you know, looked at as a non-factor, basically an outsider to the Power Five, they were looking at them discussing the fact that they could potentially be a substitute, an alternative conference for one of the two missing conferences out of the, you know, out of the Power Five, that being the, you know, Pac-12 or the Big Ten. And what that would mean is teams like SMU, Cincinnati, and uh, several others would actually finally be eligible for a chance at the college football playoffs, eligible for a chance to compete for the national title, and eligible to be part of the uh, New Year's Day Six uh, uh, bowl, t um, bowl games uh, at the end of the year. You know, so they now have basically a stronger chance at that. Um, should the NC, should the FBA and the NCAA decide, okay, we don't have the Pac-12 this year, we don't have the Big Ten this year, let's bring in the AAC and let them show what they can do. But then you have the other void that has to be filled by uh, the other conference that's out. So let's say the AAC fills the Big 12, a uh, Big Ten void. What about the Pac-12? Well, the closest you got there is the Mountain West. So when you think about it, the Mountain West and the AAC pretty much for this year only are going to be part of the Power of Five conferences that would be eligible and in discussions for a possible trip to the New Year's Day Six Bowls and the college football playoffs and a chance at the national title. Now, I'm not saying that was ever never a possibility it would all depend on the strength of schedule and the teams that these schools in these conferences would have to beat to prove, hey, we're on that same level. Well, now this year, in case something doesn't come up later on, they now have that opportunity, as well as many of the major independents, along like Notre Dame and Navy and a few others. Well, not Navy, but Notre Dame and, and Army and a few others. You know, like BYU and, and many the, along with them they now have a chance as well. But, when, when you think about it though, but when, you, but when you think about it, there's also another possibility. This possibility is probably one that could be shown a lot of favoritism because it's, just a, it's actually a good suggestion in my opinion. You see, the NCAA realizes this is not going to be one of the Traditional, a traditional college football season. This is going to be very unusual. Unless things change in the next few weeks or months, this is going to be one of the most controversial seasons they've had. So how do you basically try to put a positive cap, a positive tie, uh, you know, tie, a positive ending on this season? Well, one of the suggestions that they've come up with is throwing out the bowl eligibility rule for this one year and allowing all schools to be eligible for the 82 bowl games. Now, you do have 76 schools as of right now 
um, that are eligible that are playing that whose conferences are letting them play, but you have 82 positions. So basically, you would have 76. You would basically have all 76 teams eligible for those bowl games when you think about it, if not more so. You may have to call up some Division One, uh, some Division FCS teams just to fill the void. Who knows? Uh, but the point I'm getting at is basically that is one of the ways people are thinking about salvaging this college football season. And to me, it's going to, to me, it sounds like it's probably going to be one of the more favorable ones because from what the article I read on ESPN stated is the reason this is being suggested is to kind of make it a celebration of the sport of college football, as well as a celebration of, you know, getting through this, you know, this tiring year, this, you know, eventful year that we never expected to happen or turn out to be, turn out the way it did. You know, that, that's how the, that's how they're presenting the idea to, you know, for this one year, you know, to throw out the bowl eligibility and let all the teams that are playing right now compete in the bowl games. It's basically like a, a thank you, you know, for doing this, for going out there and providing entertainment for everybody you know, at home and those that would attend and uh, doing these, you know, trying times. So that is one way of looking at it. But again, like I said, this today and as well this past week is basically one of the strangest, most controversial starts to the college football season that I could ever remember. Uh, I'm not saying that this has never happened before in college football. I'm not saying any fo college football season in the past has ever had a controversial beginning, middle, or end. But it's just one of those situations right now where it's like, you know, you never thought possibly that this year's Power 5 conferences, that two of them would consist of the AAC and the Mountain West, possibly. Nor would you even think about the fact that there's a possibility that you could have a secondary college football season later on in the middle of the current one or in the spring of next year to kind of fill the gap, to kind of fill the void and possibly crown a regional Western American Rose Bowl champion, whatever you want to call them, spring champion. You never thought, you know, you'd have a season where that could possibly happen, nor did you think you'd have a college football season where basically the bowl eligibility rule is tossed out the window or shelved for the time being for this for this season only to basically you know allow all the teams a chance at the college bowl season as a thank you for doing this for going out there and playing and uh during these hard times during these trying times so it's really again it's it's just right now one of the most unusual starts that i've ever thought of i mean I mean, yeah, it's going to take time to get, to get used to because regionally we're used to, you know, ABC and CBS and ESPN and Fox. We're regionally, we're always used to them showing Pac-12 games or Mountain West games. But now it's going to be like, okay, here's Mountain West, here's Big 12, you know, or here's some independents. You know, so it's going to be interesting. And um, if something happens... Where, you know, we probably get a semi-normal uh, college football season uh, for the rest of the year. Like maybe a, an agreement is made on both the Pac-12 and Big Ten side of things and the Mid-American side of things. And they decide, okay, we're not going to get a full schedule of games in, but we will play the games within conference to at least get us bowl eligible or something. If, if, that, if the news comes out that that's going to happen to allow them to participate in this year... And allow them maybe a chance, a slim chance in my opinion, to get into the New Year's Day 6 and the uh, CFP, the College Football Semifinals, Playoffs, National Championship. I mean, that's cool too, but right now, uh, I don't know, it's, it's up to the people in charge. And I guarantee you, if Trump feels like it, you know, and he wants football to be played for people to watch and enjoy, to get their minds off what's going on then he'll probably use his absolute authority to make it happen. I, I would not be surprised, but but we'll have to, you know, just see what they do and, you know, just kind of get used to the fact that we're going to be watching college football games uh, from outside, from outside 
uh, our regional, our regular regional conferences. If we, you know, if we're used to Pac-12, watching the Pac-12 or the Big Ten. Um, I can say this, that even though we may have to have Stanford and Cal this year, we have San Jose State and UNLV. That's something, you know. Um, but, you know, it's just, again, like I said, it's just one of the most unusual starts, and hopefully something good will come out of it, maybe in the middle of the season, maybe before we get into the meat of the season, where all conferences will be playing, and we won't have to worry about a spring season or something like that to kind of make up for the pay, for the three conferences, that being the Big Tw Big Ten, Pac-12, and Mid-American, uh, you know, sitting out this fall season, maybe, hopefully we won't have to worry about that to make up for them to, you know, basically what I'm saying, hopefully we won't have to worry about having to go the spring route for them to make up for missing out on this season. So, uh, that's really all I wanted to say, guys, but let me know what your thoughts are on the college football season starting out the way it is. Do you see it possibly changing and kind of getting back to a semi-normal uh, status uh, before the season's out? What are your thoughts? What direction do you think they may go in when it comes to the bowl games? Um, let me know. Comment below. Um, I'd like to hear your thoughts. What are your, what's your thoughts on the possibility that the Power 5 may have to look outside of the Power 5 to, for two alternative conferences to fill the void of the Big Ten and the Pac-12? Let me know. Comment below. I'd like to hear what you guys have to say. And I will say this. Um, the, pe the guys in charge of... Uh, the Pac-12 uh, the fall sports and the Big Ten fall sports and the Mid-American fall sports. If if their affiliate political party is Democrat, after what's happened with Nancy Pelosi this past weekend and stuff, this past week I should say, um, I don't think they're going to be back anytime soon Un, um, as being in charge of the conferences uh, for the for in the near future because... If it comes out that they are democratic uh, people, then yeah, that's not going to be in their favor. So, uh, but who knows? That's just my opinion. But again, let me know what your guys' thoughts are, and um, you know, on all the possibilities that I mentioned that are being discussed in college for college football this year. And I will talk to you all later. God bless. Take care. I am out.